Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan. And in today's video we'll talk about how one can fill a moving object with liquid using Storm. To my knowledge, this isn't possible with Mantaflow for now, because the object has to be enclosed. For a more detailed explanation on this, visit the video in the info card. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get started. For the sake of this video, I will only fill a simple cube. But of course we have to first start by setting up our scene. So let's add in a plane, which is going to be our ground plane. And we can already set it to rigid body and passive. Now we can add in a cube and move it up and scale it down. So it can be a collider for our object that we'll fill with fluid. Great, let's also set it to rigid body and passive. Let's add in our final object. And now let's choose rigid body and active. If we now start playing our animation, you can see that our cube falls down, but the collision looks a bit weird. So let's move our collision cube a bit to the side, just so it is a little bit more interesting. Awesome. You can see that the cube starts falling right away. This is not what I want. I first want the cube to fill up with the liquid. So let's go to frame 20, check animated and insert a keyframe, and then go one step further, uncheck animated and insert another keyframe. Now the cube will stand still on the first 20 frames and then proceed to fall. You can see that our whole animation is only 80 frames long, so let's set our end frame to 80. We can now go into the scene tab and open the rigid body world tab. Under cache, let's click bake and now the whole animation is baked. Great, now we can set up our object to be a collider in Storm. Sadly, Storm doesn't work with solidified object, so the fluid particles won't collide with the inside of our cube. What we need to do is add cubes to the side of our cube, so they make up for the solidified version. Let's start doing this. Let's add an A cube, scale it down on the Z axis, and then move it upwards. And now let's duplicate this cube and move it to the top. Let's select these, duplicate them and rotate them on the Y axis. And let's duplicate these again and rotate them on the Z axis. So now we have our collision objects ready. To do the same with more complex objects, we can use a different technique, which I will quickly show you with the torus. Basically, we cannot use the solidify modifier, as is, but once we solidified our object, we can apply it, enter edit mode, and with 3 enable face select, select these top faces, press P, selection, and now hide the top part, and in the bottom part select these two edge loops, and with F3, search bridge edge loops and do the same for this side and then repeat this process on the top part. Now we do not have an inside of our objects but basically the object is filled and it should collide properly in storm. Back in our main scene we now have to parent all of these outer cubes to the middle cube. We can do this by first selecting all the outer cubes and then shift selecting the middle cube and after that press ctrl and p and choose object. And now everything works fine and we can export these colliders to Storm. I'm not entirely sure if this process works in older Blender versions. So if the children objects don't follow the animated cube, you'll have to first search for bake to keyframes, which will bake the rigid body animation to keyframes. After that, everything should work just fine. To export our colliders, let's select all of them in the outliner. Then go to File, Export and choose Alembic. We want to choose selected objects only and then hit export alembic. Over in Storm we can now import this object as a collider. But first, if you do not know Storm and you don't know what program this is, I already made a video about it, which you can also find in the info card. Now to set up a liquid simulation, let's go to add object and choose add sph system. This is the system which we'll be using to create our liquid simulation. Now let's choose add source and with W we can move this source up and if we now press play you can see that liquid is starting to be emitted. Now let's add in our collider. Let's go to add collider and now we'll have to change this path to the correct one. So I just copy and paste it at the correct path in here and if we press play you can see that everything works just fine. We now want to place the source inside of our collider and animate the enabled value. So right before the box starts to fall down, let's alt click on enabled 
And one step further, let's right click, choose false and alt click on it again. And now if we press play, everything should work as expected. Of course, we don't see any fluid right now because the box is in the way. So we can set draw mesh to false. And if we now press play, you can see that fluid is starting to be emitted and it also stays inside of our object. Great, we now only need a way to create a mesh from these particles and then export the mesh into Blender. To do this, let's select our simple SPH particle system, which by the way has a lot of different settings that you can change, but for now these settings will be good. With the SPH particle system selected, let's go to Tools and choose Add Measure. This will add an A Measure node that is already linked to the correct particle system. And you can see that it is taking effect and the particles are being meshed. To write out this mesh sequence, we need a write node. So with the measure node selected, hit tab and type in write and now choose the write node. We want to left click on the file path right here and change the extension from ABC to OBJ because the alembic files that Storm exports cannot be imported into Blender. So we'll need to create an OBJ sequence and after that import it with a special add-on into Blender. Once that is all done, we can quickly set the end frame to 80 because this is what we used in Blender and now we can click on Sim. The OBJ sequence will be written out into the cache folder. Once everything is exported, we want to install the set add-on. So let's go to Preferences, Install and install the Stop Motion OBJ add-on. By the way, the add-on can be downloaded from the link in the video description. You'll have to navigate to releases and then download this zip folder. Awesome! With the add-on installed, let's, let's go to File, Import, Mesh Sequence and let's locate our OBJ sequence. You can see that every object starts with write, so in the file name field, type in write. To import this sequence, we only have to click on Select Folder. And you can see that the add-on starts to import the sequence. By the way, I'm right now in Blender 2.91. I'm not entirely sure if the add-on still works in newer versions. Okay, great, the sequence is now imported and it can be played. And you can see that it stays inside of our cube. We can now go ahead and toggle the Disable in Renders checkbox and disable all of these collision cubes in the viewport and render. We can also apply a simple solidify modifier to our object, just so it looks like a container. And yeah, that's basically it. The shading and lighting is all up to you, because I only wanted to show you how we can fill a moving object with liquid. Hopefully this tutorial was interesting and you learned something. If you did, consider liking and subscribing. And we'll see each other in the next video next Saturday.